Hey guys, it's Bella and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing another day of my 12 days of Christmas. If you are enjoying these, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell on my channel so that you don't miss any. And let's go ahead and get started. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the case of Rhonda Hinson. Rhonda Hinson was born on the 13th of December in 1962 to Bobby and Judy Hinson. She was born in Vladis, I think, Think Vladis in North Carolina and was one of two children. She also had a brother named Robert. Growing up, Rhonda was really popular at school. She played tennis. She was just a really fun girl to be around. So on the night of the 22nd of December in 1981, Rhonda was going to her first ever office Christmas party at the American League hut in Hickory. She'd recently graduated from high school and was working as a clerical worker for a steel company called Hickory Steel. So she left the party with two friends at about midnight and dropped her friends off at about 12.30. She decided not to stay the night and then just instead to drive the 10 mile distance back to her parents parents house where she lived. So on her way home she drove on Interstate 40 and then she turned off on the Mineral Springs Mountain 350 exit. She then turned right heading north and traveled up a steep hill towards her home. At around 1am her mother Judy woke up after having a strange premonition in her dream. She believed for some reason that Rhonda had been in an accident so she woke up her husband Bobby who checked a police scanner to see if there had been any accidents around. And this is when they heard that there had been a homicide and that Rhonda was the victim. Her beige Datsun 210 was found lying on the side of the Mineral Spring Mountain Highway about 1.5 miles or 2.4 kilometers away from her house. It was found half in a ditch, half on the street, and the driver's side door was open when it was found and Rhonda's body was found nearby. She was found lying on her back with her arms positioned in a way that looked deliberate, in a way that looked like somebody had positioned them there. The car was still on when it was found and it had, like, it was originally on the other side of the road and had, like, rolled into the position that it was in from across the other side of the road. And Rhonda had unfortunately been killed by one shot from a high powered rifle. The bullet had penetrated through the trunk of her car, the back of her seat, and then into her lung and her heart. So at first, obviously this kind of looked like either a random murder or an accident. But there were just too many things around the scene that just made it look like it was deliberate. I mean, first of all, why was she outside of the car? She was shot inside the car and then she was found with the door open. She was found a little bit away from her car and it looked like somebody had not only pulled her out of her car but deliberately positioned her arms to the position she was found in. So this obviously kind of pointed it to a I'll be a little bit more than just a random act. Now, on top of this, Rhonda had been acting extremely weird for the few weeks leading up to her murder. She was usually super comfortable driving alone, but in the weeks leading up to her death, she constantly asked her dad to come with her everywhere. Like, she didn't want to drive alone. If she was just doing a trip into town, she would always get her dad to come with her or something, which was very out of the ordinary for Rhonda. She also told him that she had something to tell him and that it was bad, but then she never ended up telling him what it was. On another occasion, her mum spoke about a conversation that she had with Rhonda where Rhonda asked her if there was ever a right time to sleep with a man who was married or have a relationship with a man who was married. Her mother had absolutely no idea why she was asking if it was for herself or for a friend, but whatever the case may be, she told her that there was never an okay time to do that. She said that the only thing that ever comes from it is getting hurt. Rhonda was also suffering from insomnia in the few weeks leading up to her murder and she would randomly have showers in the middle of the night and when her mother asked about it she said it was just because she felt really dirty. And according to police this behavior is not unusual for someone who had been sexually abused so police thought that either she had been sexually assaulted, that she was being stalked or that she was under some sort of pressure. 
Rhonda's boyfriend at the time also said in a local newspaper that he didn't want her to go to the party that night. I couldn't find the exact reason as to why he didn't want her to go to the party. And there's also some conflicting evidence as to whether or not she called him that night on her way home. So several witnesses actually came forward to police. Most notably, there was a woman who said that around 12.15 to 12.30, on the morning of Rhonda's murder, she was driving under Interstate 40, which was the like mineral spring mountain highway. She said that she saw two males in a blue GM Chevrolet sitting on the side of the highway facing a northerly direction. And this was parked right next to the same exit that Rhonda would eventually use that morning to exit on her way home. The same car was spotted just 40 minutes before Rhonda's murder and just 200 meters away from where Rhonda's body was found. Another witness said that later that morning he saw a similar blue car speeding away from where Rhonda was murdered and as he continued up the road he saw Rhonda's car in the same spot that her body was later found. The witness also said that he saw Rhonda inside the car slumped over the steering wheel and he saw an unidentified man standing at the driver's like door. He didn't honestly really get a good look at the man and he didn't pay too much attention because at the time he just thought they were like a drunk couple or something so he didn't think that it was really that out of the ordinary. Now this same witness actually agreed to go under hypnosis to get any information that he maybe saw but didn't or he saw subconsciously but couldn't actually remember. While under hypnosis he said that the car was a 70s blue Chappelle, Chevelle and it had like a messed up bumper. He also said that the man standing at the car was a white male with brown hair, a medium build, and that he was between 5'10 and 6 foot. He also recalled seeing another car parked just down the road from where Rhonda's vehicle was found, and it was either a dark blue or black Trans Am. Investigators also found several prints on Rhonda's driver's side door. They entered them into the national database, but they didn't come back with any matches. Since then, investigators have questioned hundreds of different suspects and people in relation to this case. They brought in psychics, they used polygraphs on several different witnesses, but nothing more ever came of it and there has been no more information. On January of 1982, Governor James B. Hunt offered a $5,000 reward for any information in regards to Rhonda's killer. The town of Valdez also offered up a $5,000 reward. The total reward for any information on Rhonda's killer ended up at $20,000 with some help from the Morganton Burke Crime Stoppers and also private donations. But even with this incentive, there was still no more information ever found. Okay, so let's talk about a few theories. Now, the first theory is that the killer was a jealous lover. So as I mentioned earlier, Rhonda did ask her mother if there was ever an okay time to be or start a relationship with a married man, which is kind of a weird question to ask, in my opinion. Like, first of all, it's a weird question to ask for your friends because you know that it's not okay. I mean, you're old enough, she was old enough to know that it wasn't okay, so it seems like a weird question to ask for her friends, but maybe if she was asking for herself, she was looking for some kind of validation. I feel like it makes more sense for her to be asking for herself in that sort of situation. So maybe she was sleeping with a married man and his wife found out and got jealous, which honestly, that doesn't really line up to me because all witness accounts said that they saw a man. I mean, it's possible that she was seeing a married man and it was the married man himself that decided to kill her. Maybe she was pregnant and, or maybe she threatened to tell his wife or threatened to tell somebody and he just decided he couldn't have that and decided to kill her. It's also possible that her boyfriend found out and got jealous and in some sort of jealous rage shot her. Um, his alibi has never been released, information about whether or not he or his family owned a similar rifle to the one that was used to shoot Rhonda has never been released. So I don't know, whatever the case may be, jealousy I've seen in previous cases can make people do crazy things. So 
the boyfriend was cleared and I really couldn't find a lot of information on him so I really don't know what the situation is there but in regards to the theory with the married man maybe the wife hired a hit person or maybe it was the married man himself. Another theory is that this whole thing was an accident or that maybe the bullet was just a stray from someone who was hunting in like an a freak accident. There was actually a similar case in 1967 when a girl named Nancy McEwen was shot. She was driving by when a ricochet from a bullet that was shot by a man on a nearby boat actually hit her and killed her. So that's kind of what started this whole theory I guess is the fact that this had happened before and there was precedent for it and nobody could find any reasons why anybody would want to murder Rhonda. Maybe the witnesses that came forward and said that they saw these cars actually saw the person who accidentally shot her. Maybe they went over to see what had happened if she was still alive to help her out. But once they found out that she was dead, they decided to flee the scene um, because they didn't want to get in trouble. Honestly, this theory, in my opinion, isn't very credible just because First of all, the witnesses saw the cars there before the murder even took place, not in a place to go hunting. They were sitting on the side of a road, of a highway, just waiting there. Like 40 minutes before Rhonda was there, the exit that she was going to take later that night, they were just sitting at. Unless the people in the car were just witnesses, but this also doesn't make sense to me because if they were a witness, why wouldn't they just come forward? And this theory also doesn't account for her strange behavior in the weeks leading up to her murder. The next theory is that this was just a case of mistaken identity. Now, obviously, as witnesses said, there was a car with two men in it right near where the murder took place. And there was also another car a little bit down from where the murder took place as well. So some people saw this as maybe some sort of organized hit. So maybe she was mistaken for somebody else in the dark as she passed them. This theory was actually reinforced by experts that said that the shot that killed her would have been extremely hard to make, especially considering there was just one shot. They said that because of the incline it was shot at, because of the darkness at the time, and also because of the distance it was likely shot at, that it was a very, very difficult, if not near impossible, shot to make. So if it was that difficult, I would say it's definitely likely that it came from someone who was experienced like a hitman. If it was a case of mistaken identity, this still doesn't explain like her weird behavior in the few weeks leading up to her murder. Maybe I'm just looking into it too much and it's just a coincidence, but I don't know. I just can't shake the fact that she was acting so strange before her murder and then she was murdered. It just... it. I feel personally like there has to be some sort of foul play deliberately on Rhonda because it just seems like too much of a coincidence to me. I also think if it was this hitman, it could have been from a jealous boyfriend person she was seeing or wife of person she was seeing. Now, the last theory that we're going to talk about is that she was killed when she stopped to help someone on the side of the road. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the window on her driver's side door was actually rolled down. So some people theorize that she pulled over on the side of the road to talk to someone and that's why she had her window rolled down. Those around her say that the only way she would stop to talk to someone is if it was somebody she knew or somebody of authority, just especially because of the way that she had been acting in the lead up to her murder where she had her dad literally driving everywhere with her. So maybe somebody was dressed up as law enforcement and asked her to stop. Um, maybe somebody pretended to pull her over. Maybe it was somebody that she knew. Maybe this person that stopped her was someone she knew that she actually hadn't told anyone about. Maybe the reason she was acting weird is because she was involved in drugs. I hadn't seen anything at all relating to that theory, but you know, it's always a possibility, especially considering her different behavior. Police also, as I mentioned, thought that maybe she was being stalked. So maybe it was her stalker that 
dressed up as a police officer or maybe she knew her stalker and they got her to pull over or somehow this person got her to pull over. And I also think the stalking makes sense considering she was making her dad go everywhere with her. Maybe that was because, you know, this person was following her and she was scared. Maybe that's why she was having these showers because she felt dirty that this person was following her. Maybe they had sexually assaulted her previously. And that is everything for this case. I would love to know if you guys have any other theories, if there's any other information that I may have missed. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this case in the comments down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.